Say hello to the new SwimOutlet.com. Enhanced navigation, larger, higher resolution imagery, more filtering and search capability so you can find what you need faster. As always, low price guarantee and free shipping on $49. The redesigned SwimOutlet.com. Dive in, say hi. This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, May 13th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings, and we have a great show for you today. Joining me shortly in the Finis Monitor will be Liam Tancock. He was just named to his third Commonwealth Games team and will be looking to defend his titles in the 50 and 100 backstrokes. After dealing with some shoulder injuries last year, Tancock is back into full training with an eye further down the road towards Rio. And let's bring him now via Skype from England. Liam, it's great to see you. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Just finished the training session and it's, well, it's nice to catch up with you guys again. Always great to catch up with you. First off, happy belated birthday. You turned 29 on May 7th, so does 29 feel like you thought it would? Uh, it doesn't feel any different. I think birthdays all roll into one when you get to my age and, um, you know, I hang out with a, a, a group of talented young swimmers and, um, to be honest, we all feel about the same sort of age, so... It, it, I actually feel about 21, not 29, but, um, you know, maybe I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, probably some of those days at the end of workouts, you're probably feeling your age. So maybe, yeah, <laughs> I'll give you that. Well, uh, you also had a great birthday present um, last on May 7th. You were named to the Commonwealth Games team on your birthday, so I imagine you had a little bit of celebrating to do that day. Yeah, it's pretty special. To be fair, it was, it, was, it was a pretty normal day for me, you know, get up in the morning, trained twice uh, in the gym once we actually went out for a squad meal which was which was nice in the evening so um, I think there's 12 members of Loughborough heading heading to some international competitions this summer so um, yeah it's been a pretty special time obviously my birthday as well uh, being named in the England team for, for the third time so yes it was a it was a pretty good day all in all I guess you can't take any time off I guess your coach couldn't say okay we'll let you take a break because this this is too important for you to to even take just even an hour off exactly no rest for the wicked this is what we used to you know you speak to swimmers from all around the world and um you know we train day in day out and this is what we love you know training's training's fun but we live to race so um you know being named as part of that the england team for the commonwealth is you know an honor for me and uh, you know i can't wait to do it obviously normally we race as great britain so you know once every four years um, get to race as Team England, and uh, I can't wait. Well, to tell you the truth, I was a bit surprised to see your name on the roster because you did not win the 100 back at British Nationals, which was the selection meet, and your time didn't get close to the qualifying standard. So what was the criteria that got you on the team for England? So it was a little bit of a strange criteria. No one really knew um, who was selected once the meet was going on. Uh, it basically worked off on a, a percentage basis of the top... Um, I think it was 36 swimmers, um, and and I I made it into that top 36. Um, so yeah, I, I did enough to to get on the team this time. It's been a it's been an interesting year. Um, so yeah, to make it on the team's good. Now it's uh, you know buckling down to the training and uh, making the, the next few months count. Was there any doubt in your mind that you were going to make the team at all? Uh, for me, I'm a pretty positive guy. I think if you spoke to my teammates and uh, you know friends and family, they'd all say the same. But um, all you can do is the best on the day and um, and give it what you got. And I certainly did that. Um, then it's down to the selection politi policies and then the um, obviously the selectors who who pick the team. So um, you know, unfortunately, I have no say over that. Uh, you know, on a positive, I made the team. So you know, that's what it's all about. I'm you know. As I say, this is going to be my third Commonwealth Games. It's pretty special to be in, in the UK. Um, it's going to be in Glasgow this year, so that's going to be pretty pretty cool. Obviously, we had the London Olympics two years ago now, so um, another home Games for us is always going to be good. Well, I imagine you said you're, you're a pretty positive guy. You had to be pretty positive last year. You're going through all those shoulder issues. Did you have to have surgery at all? Take us through what was going on with you last year. Yeah, so last year was a bit strange for me. You know, I've been through my swimming career, um, you know, up until this last year, really, with no injuries at all. So, you know, when this injury came on, it was it was in both shoulders. Uh, it fluctuated between both shoulders. Um, you know, I saw so many different specialists, so many physios. 
you know, some of the best people in their field um, had MRI scans, had injections, you know, saw shoulder surgeons, pretty much you name it, I saw them. Um, and no one really knew what it was. So obviously for, for an athlete, all I want to do is, you know, know what I can do to get better and get back in the pool and swim. And, and um, you know, no one, no one was giving me the answers. So that was a very frustrating time. Um, back end of last year, uh, you know, we sat down with British Swimming, sat down with my coach, the doctors, and tried to work out a plan. And um, in, in Great Britain, we've got uh, the British Olympic Association, who've got a centre down uh, just outside of London in a place called Bisham Abbey. Um, and basically, it's an intensive rehab unit. Um, and we spoke to those guys and, and basically checked me in there. So, um, you know, I went down to Bisham. Um, with all the notes that I've had from all the different um, specialists that I've seen um, and said, look, can you look at it with some fresh eyes and see what you think about it? Um, took me completely out of the pool. I was doing no training. It was a purely, you know, get myself ready and, um, you know, some fresh eyes looking at, looking at my body, looking at my shoulder. Um, long and short of it, they did find out what it was. It was nothing to do with my shoulder. It was actually my hips. Um, so... Yeah, a, a pretty crazy time, but, um, you know, they found out what it was, told me how to fix it, um, got on and, you know, helped me fix it, worked with my team based up in Loughborough uh, and British Swimming, English Institute of Sport and the British Olympic Association, everyone working together to uh, to get me back in the pool training, and ultimately, you know, that's what's made me, you know, get to the team uh, for this summer. Well, that's really interesting. You thought it was your shoulders, and it turned out to be your hips. How are those two things connected? Uh, it, it seems like that, you know, your body's a very complex thing. And I think if you talk to, you know, the, some of the, the specialist brains in the, in the world, um, you know, we still don't know everything there is to know about the human body. And, um, you know, this was just one example. Everything they thought it was, you know, my body was saying, and you know, something else. It was almost like I was making it up. And then they were like, no, right, we found it. Um, yeah, so um, it was uh, obviously a very frustrating time for me. But as soon as we, you know, as soon as we found out what it was, it was actually not that hard to fix. And you know, one of the things they said to me is like, "I'm I'm so pleased you didn't have surgery. I've seen this happen to people before where they've had surgery, and that's you know a career ending." Um, luckily, I didn't. Um, it was probably close at points, but um, you know, sort of a last case saloon went down and and spoke to these specialists. Um, you know, checked in there for for 10 days and um, they sorted me right out. So it was, it was perfect, really. That's great. Are you close to being back to 100%? Uh, yeah, so um, as I say, you know, last cycle leading up into the trials was very much, you know, training to um, to my limits, really, doing what I could do rather than what I couldn't do, you know, not really pushing my body an awful lot. Um, and, and being on top of everything. And now, you know, I'm looking at my body as, as a fixed body. Uh, my shoulders are fixed. My, my hips are fixed. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a, a long-term thing where I, you know, carry on doing the rehab and, and prehab and, you know, everything I need to do to keep me on the straight and narrow and keep me, um, keep me in the pool. But, um, you know, it's, it's injury-free at the moment, which is fantastic. Um, and I think if you spoke to most swimmers, you know, from an age group program all the way up to an elite level, um, the amount of times we spend in the water, the amount of hours we spend in the in the pool each year, is a is a phenomenal amount. So unfortunately, I missed the back end of last year, uh, and I also missed sort of the first half of this season as well. So you know, leading into the trials, I had you know two to three months of of average training really. Um, now I'm fixed. I've made the team uh, in my mindset. I'm ready to go and. Um, you know, I've got a good few months leading in now, so it's almost doubling my uh, doubling my cycle here. So it's um, it's not a full season, you know, to say that you know it's nowhere near a full season. I've missed out the first four months, but um, you know, it's definitely um, definitely an extended season, which I'm you know which I'm really excited about, and um, let's see what can happen. Really, what do you think your chances are to defend your Commonwealth titles in the 50 and 100 backstrokes, given everything that you've been going through now? Well, as I say, I'm a positive guy, and um, you know, on any given day, I'd I'd race anyone. I, I you know, I love getting in the pool, and I I love racing the best in the world, and that's what the Commonwealths are going to be about. So, um, you know, I'll be I'll be ready and raring on that day, and um, I'll be I'll be ready to ready to race. So, um, I guess who knows? Yeah, as you say, I went to to Melbourne, picked up a gold medal in 2006 at my first Commonwealths. 
uh, picked up, up a couple more in uh, in Delhi in 2010. So, um, you know, 2014, let's hope it's another special year. Um, as you said, two gold medals in, in Commonwealth Games in 2010. You've done a lot since then. Um, how have you changed as an athlete in these past four years? I think maybe I've probably changed the most in this last in the last year, understanding injury and um, and really getting over it. So um, it's quite a mental thing to be able to do. And uh, you know, as I say, if you speak to some of the the people around the world, you know, top athletes who've been injured, they tell you exactly the same. It does make you stronger, and it, it you know it makes you want it even more. Um, so that's been a quite exciting. Um, but I actually worked out the other day that I've been competing um, actually. Could, Competing since I was eight, so uh, for 21 years I've been competing now, which is which is a pretty big feat. Um, and um, I think you you know I try and learn from every every competition I go to, every meet I go to, you know not just from what I could do, from the people around me. And I've done that since the the age of eight when I you know raced in Exeter City Swimming Club, my local my local pool, and um, you know I still do it today up here in Loughborough University. Um, so I, I try to learn from everything I do really, but. Um, you know, I guess you get older, older and wiser and under, understand your body a lot more. So I think that's a that's a big positive I've, you know, I've definitely learned in the in the last few years. It's definitely understanding in, in understanding your body. I'm sure you have. Uh, you're going off to a training camp, um, I understand. Where are you going to? Uh, well, I am actually off to a training camp. Um, I'm based here in Loughborough, and the training camp's in Loughborough, so that's pretty exciting, isn't it? <laughs> well, <laughs> usually, that's sunny for me. Usually, you guys um, go off yeah, somewhere so like Spain. It's going to be a British swimming training camp based here in Loughborough. It's the it's the the training centre, the performance centre here in um, here in Great Britain. So um, yeah, that's where it'll be. It'll sort of be uh, it'd be nice to get the the full British swimming team here. So um, that'll be good. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's nowhere exotic. Yeah, you guys usually go to Spain or something like that. So, okay. I, but it's probably good that you guys you're staying home. Yeah, no, it's nice, and obviously being with the team would be pretty cool. Uh, we're heading off to the Mare Nostrum series, so I'm going to head out to Cane in Barcelona uh, in about a month's time. So that'll be pretty cool as well. I know lots of people from around the world uh, will be at the, those meets. So, um, you know, I look forward to, to seeing those guys there. Really. This is something I've wanted to ask you for a couple of years now, um, since, especially since watching you at the Olympics. Uh, you have a kind of a, a unique way of entering the water for your backstroke races. Everybody else just kind of just jumps right in, but you kind of ease yourself in, and we're actually showing viewers a, a video of that now. Um, do you just not want to get your face wet, or is this like a superstition? <laughs> What's going on with it? You know, lots of people actually pick up on that, and um, you know, it might look like I'm one of these crazy British guys, but um, you know, there is method to the madness, and um, you know, this is something I picked up when I was, you know, I've been doing this since I was eight and started competing, um, and the the method behind it for for me, and you know, the the thinking behind it is um, is that you know, if the the handle's dry and your hands are dry. You know, you've got a better grip on the handle, so you can get a, a better grip before you um, before you start the race. Obviously, if there's if there's any water about at all, there's there's more chance of slipping. There's more chance of your hand slipping. Um, so there is a little bit of method behind the madness, and this is you know something I I talked to my very first coach about, John Randall, back in you know when I was when I was very young, and um, something that's pretty much stuck with me now. So um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I guess it's unique. It's you know not everyone does it, and you know everyone asks the question, why do you do it? So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So keep my hands dry, keep the um, keep the starting block dry, and um, you get a better connection, better grip on the block, and um, hopefully a better start. Yeah, and and speaking of getting a better start, they're introducing the new backstroke starting platforms now. What do you have you been able to try those yet? Yeah, I've had a, I've had a play around with them. So yeah, that's been quite exciting. Um, It'd be interesting to see. I've not seen um, a fully working model. I've seen one of the de the demonstration models, and you know I've had to play around with that. So you know it'd be interesting to see. And um, you know I think the innovation in sport has moved on so much in the last you know the last ten years in swimming really. Um, and you know innovation in in starting blocks have as well. So obviously for for all the other disciplines, but backstroke pads have been the same for well for as long as I can remember. So it's nice to see you know that. That little bit of innovation moving things on and um you know 
I'm sure some of the, the best starters in the world are still going to have the best starts and, um, you know, some of the people who haven't are obviously going to catch up, but, you know, that's the nature of the game and um, that's what it's all about. So, yeah, looking forward to actually, you know, trying them in a race. Yeah, hopefully that'll be pretty soon. Well, I know you've got a long, I'm sure you're just exhausted from all your training, so we won't, we won't keep you here any longer, much longer, but... Before we go, Liam, we want to submit you to the final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the Morning Swim Show. So first question is, if you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Do you know, I thought about this the other day, and I actually don't think I would change it. I think it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty good thing for me. Freestyle would be my worst discipline. You know, um, the, the people out there that don't know, I've actually... You know, been been doing 200 medleys. Um, when I was a bit younger, I was in the Olympic final in 2008 for 200 200 medley. So, you know, I do like the event, and I think that's probably the best the best order for me. So, I don't think I would. Okay, interesting. I would have thought you'd say end it with backstroke, so you have a little bit of a an edge at the end there. Um, nah, I, I'd keep it. I'd keep it as it is. Okay. Um, besides being a professional swimmer, what's a career or job you would like to try? Um, I don't know. I like I like sports. I like being involved with with sports, and I like seeing what you know the best athletes in the world do. I'm a, I'm a bit of a watcher when it comes to that. I like going down to, you know, some some sport events we have here in Britain. Obviously, uh, the tennis down at Wimbledon. I like going down and seeing you know how Roger Federer warms up, what he does. Um, you know, the best people in in their you know disciplines do what they do. So. I don't know if there's a job involved in that, but um, that that really interests me. I just I just love being around the the best athletes in the world and seeing seeing why they're the best. Okay. Um, on the reverse side of that, what's a career or job you know you would not like to try? Um. Probably a. I don't know. Um. Just. Just something boring. Something like sitting inside and and not being. You know, I'm a very outdoorsy sort of person. Ever since I was young, I've always uh, always been outside with the family on bike rides, down the beach, you know, in the pool. Um, so something sitting at a desk, I don't think that would uh, that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be cool for me. Okay. What's a rule in the swimming rule book that you would like to change or add? Rule in the swimming. Uh, do you know? What? I'd actually like to um, mix up the distances a little bit. Something we were talking about earlier today in the session. Um, you know, we've we've traditionally had 50 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters, and above. Um, you know, I'd love to see a 75 meters. I'd love to see a 150 meters. Um, you know, I know I know they do in in USA swimming sometimes. Obviously, short course and things like that, or short course yards. They do some some different things, but um, you know, I think that'd be pretty cool. And um, you know, you yeah, if it's a 75 long course. Then maybe have like a you know rather than finishing on a wall, you'd finish through like a, a laser beam or something, something funky, so funk up swimming, make it make it fashionable, make it a uh, a spectator sport, make people you know excited about it again. Yeah, that would be interesting. I never thought about that. All right, last question for you, Liam. Where would you like to go for vacation? Do you know what? I love holidays. I love chilling on the beach. I just love relaxing. I love going in the sea. To be fair, actually. I, as soon as I sit down on a sun lounger, I'm standing up again and want to be in the sea. So um, anywhere, anywhere hot, um, you know, the Caribbean, Indian Ocean, somewhere like that. All right. Well, hopefully you get that chance to do that after um, this summer where I'm sure you're going to be back to your prime. We can't wait to see you at the Commonwealth Games, Liam. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Thanks for having me again. And yeah, catch up soon. All right. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so the Commonwealth Games takes place July 24th through 29th, so set your calendars to see if Liam can win more gold in Scotland. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Morning Swim Show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.